Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. For those of you who are finding this for the first time, my name's Kelly Roberts. 24-year-old Kelly Roberts decided to take selfies with unsuspecting <laughs> cute guys. Kelly Roberts doesn't take herself too seriously. She's a runner. A slow jog. We have to change it. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. This crazy roller coaster ride started in 2016, two years ago, over two years ago, when, uh, I caught myself saying that taking myself seriously enough to qualify for the Boston Marathon and take my marathon PR from three hours and 59 minutes down to three hours and 35 minutes was impossible. I mean, at that point, just the fact that I was a runner was hilarious and silly, and it still is, and it's like crazy that I'm a runner, but I had just broken four hours in the marathon for the first time. It took me like four tries, five tries, and taking myself seriously enough to be that crazy athlete that I didn't think I was, it just sounded ludicrous. I'm trying to shave off 20 minutes. Do you think it's doable? Mm -hmm. Of honest. course. Honest. Do you think it's doable? It's absolutely doable. Uh. <laughs> okay, so where do we start? <laughs> I thought I was gonna quit every single day. I wanna die. And I learned a lot this and I realized how horribly I was talking to myself and seeing myself and the sports bra squad was born a movement dedicated to redefining what strength looks like we're doing it <laughs> beer and ice cream became a beacon of hope that got me through some pretty tough times <laughs> how to believe in myself. Don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. And I did a lot of panicking. <laughs> I'm in panic mode. I'm shaking. What's my time goal? 3.35? It's BQ or bust, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm done being scared. And after a few months of just insanely hard work, race day came. <laughs> and even though I didn't be cute, I did what I set out to do, which was just give my best. I felt like I won. Oh my god. I feel like a total and complete rock star. That was. I can't believe I ran that fast. So I wanted to try again. London Marathon, take two. I'm at my old high school. Literally, the last time I was on this track. I was probably hiding under a bleacher, so it's funny that I'm coming here before sunrise on my own. It was hard. Don't cry. Oh, this is really hard. But take two wasn't as hard as take one because that time I believed in myself and I knew I wouldn't give up. No regrets, no excuses. All you can do is what you can do today. Still, I struggled a lot. God, I don't know why I get so freaked out sometimes when I have to run. And things were going amazing. I was running fast as hell, strong as hell, having a ton of fun. 736! Ah! World record! <laughs> but then about a month before race day, I got hurt. My calves hurt, my thighs hurt, my hips hurt, my, my frigging feet hurt. Uh, today was really painful. Really painful? Like, so painful that I couldn't run. My head still hurts. So, shelf the workout. Are you sure? Should I at least try? Nope. And it wasn't a terrible, terrible injury. It was just kind of a gray area. And I just hoped for a miracle. And I got one. It just wasn't the miracle I was hoping for. I am so done with it for now. Like, I don't want to run a marathon for a long time. I'm super disappointed. I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was disappointed. I wanted to quit so bad. And I cannot believe I did not walk off that course because I was so close to quitting. That race fucked me up. It took me an entire year before I was ready to try again. I was that 
hurt about what went down. I feel like I let everyone down. I feel like I let myself down. I feel like I didn't get the race I thought I deserved. I didn't give my best. And I just felt really embarrassed and stupid and heartbroken that I'd spent so much time working for this thing that I knew was going to happen and then got derailed by something that was totally out of my control. But with time, I was ready to try again. So then came BQ or bus take three. If ever there was a metaphor for how a year made me feel, it's this. This time, it was cold. How cold is it? I certainly think that it's cold. And hard. Oh my God. Oh my God. But mostly it was just a ton of fun. Five miles in. It's easy. Super easy. But I can tell you that that went amazing. Hooked on a feeling. Reach 20. Hey, 640 pace. I was showing up for myself day after day after day and giving myself permission to succeed instead of assuming I would fail, which was the, the giant pattern that I had the hardest time breaking. Now we're working. Again. When you say like it was bad, like hey, can oh. you get through your run still doing like yeah, but it's like no. no. I mean yes, but it's like if this is gonna be like this for the rest of it, like I just don't want to do it. I'd much rather wait until fall. BQ robust is on hold. There is no May Vermont marathon. Everything is paused. Here's what's up. So I've had like issues with my right side for over a year now and it's been piriformis muscle stuff. It's been TFL muscle stuff. It's been my hamstring. I was talking to my PT Rachel at Finish Line Physical Therapy and she at first she was really nice about it but then she started like laying down the law and she said here's what we're doing. Four, four weeks. We're giving it four weeks and if in four weeks it doesn't improve, no race. So here's what we're doing. We're taking a month and a half to like sit on it, rest, strength train, recover, and do my breathing work. Hardcore. And then we're picking it back up and we're going to go for a fall marathon. So yeah. Ah, frustrating. And that's when something really exciting happened. Ah, Nike reached out to me. I got an email right after I put out word that I wasn't going to be racing my third BQ attempt, and they asked me if I wanted to try again. So we talked, and I talked to my physical therapist, Rachel, at Finish Line Physical Therapy, and we decided, hell yeah, I'm going for it. So I, Nike has this thing called Project Moonshot. You've probably heard of Breaking 2, which was their uh, crazy attempt to break two hours in a marathon, and then all these other people did the, the same thing. They tried to make their impossible possible. They set these crazy goals that they truly didn't think they were capable of doing because it had never been done before by them. They Maybe they had a history of quitting. Maybe it was something that they just scared the shit out of them. And they said, you know, like, Kelly, get your BQ and let us help you do it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So here we are. We're running the New York City Marathon. It feels so crazy for me to say that out loud. I, uh, the New York City Marathon has just like the, the most like special place in my heart because New York City is home for me. This is the city that scares the crap out of me every single day. It is so hard to live here. I mean, you run along the water here and you, it's just like a constant reminder of your best because you can't live here unless you're just kicking your ass and putting your best foot forward every single day. You have to work your ass off to live here. And for me, like to run the, the streets of New York City, this is the place where I broke four hours for the first time. This is the place that like gave me everything. And for me to do it with Nike, I, I'm just speechless. I got to uh, create a just do it spot 
which I'll, here, here's a little clip of it. I used to think that there's one type of runner. And I never looked like that. You had to be skinny and muscular, and that's just not the case at all. <sighs> it's insane. Like, the, the, the training that we're going to be doing with Nike, the nutrition that they're giving me, uh, the, the strength training that I'm doing with both finish line physical therapy and with them is just like, this time around feels so different. I'm still super afraid because coming off of an injury like that has been happening for so long, what happened, for those of you who are like, what happened? Uh, I have tendinosis in the like insertion point of my hamstring and uh, yeah, I'm nervous, but I learned this the first time around. The only way you fail is if you fail to try. This isn't about race day. This is about today. Doing what I can today. And the same goes for you. Don't just set a goal that you know you can do and then walk through the motions and feel proud of yourself. Set a goal that scares the crap out of you. Maybe it's your first marathon. Maybe it's your first half marathon. Maybe you wanna break two hours in a half marathon. BQ. Maybe you wanna break four hours in a marathon, run your first 5K, run a mile without having to stop to walk, learn to like working out. Plot twist, you probably won't, I still haven't, <laughs> just my two cents. Whatever it is, set a goal that just feels impossible and go for it. Because you have no idea what's going to happen in those four to 16 weeks. But regardless of what happens, they're gonna change you. They're going to make you a stronger, happier, fuller person. You're gonna give yourself permission to unlock all those doors that you shut for yourself. It will change your life. I know it changed mine. Be or bust. Take four. Are you ready?